Hello, today I'm going to be going through changes to partnership accounts part 3. So what I thought I'd do is put together a short video on miscellaneous types of transactions to do with partnership accounts. Okay, so in the previous videos to partnership we've looked at things like goodwill, admission, retirement, changes in the profit sharing ratio, we've looked at capital accounts, we've looked at current accounts, okay? And there are still a few areas here and there that need to be covered off before you can really attempt pass paper questions on partnership accounts. So what I thought I'd do is put this video together covering off just general miscellaneous transactions, things that I think need to be reinforced before you start any practice question. So we'll start off with, um, I've, you can see I've put some a few slides together and we'll just tackle each one as they come. So on this particular slide when a partner is admitted obviously we've, we've talked about this before that they are going to bring some money to the business i.e. cash, okay, and obviously any cash they bring is treated as capital. The double entry, I'm sure you know this already, but the money comes into the bank, so you debit the bank and you credit that particular partner's capital account. So this is straightforward money brought into the partnership. However, what you may find is in the past papers they've mentioned a partner has brought to the business cash and they have bought they have brought in also um, you know a piece of machinery as well so how do you deal with that well you treat them both the same so cash is capital and any type of non current assets that they bring into the business as well so things like equipment or motor vehicles, etc., they are also capital. Okay, just because a partner's bought in 50k in cash and 20k in capital in in assets, you can't just consider the cash as capital. The non-current assets must also be treated as capital. Okay, so how do you deal with that? Well, if equipment is brought in. Then you debit equipment because obviously the business will have more equipment and that particular partner's capital account you will credit and you will obviously acknowledge that you will increase their capital okay so cash is treated as capital where you increase their capital account and if they bring in non-current assets then you also increase their capital account okay Similarly, when a partner retires, obviously they are going to take any cash that they have with them. Okay, they will leave the business and they will take anything that belongs to them. And so when the business pays them off, the business will pay them off through the bank. So you credit the bank, the money goes out of there. And then you debit the cap their capital account. Okay, and that obviously cancels the credit balance that they will have. Okay, so for example, myself as a partner, if I have money in my in, in the business, I have a credit balance. And if I want to cancel that and close my account down because I'm leaving, then I will debit the capital. Okay, so this is just straightforward. Partner is leaving, credit the bank, debit capital, pay them off and cancel any money that they have in their capital account, i.e. close the account off, okay. The second part here is to do with, similar to above, okay, partner joins, they bring in equipment, if a partner retires, then if the other partners are happy with the arrangement, they could potentially leave with I don't know, let's just say they liked one of the vehicles that the company owned, that the partnership owned, okay? They could choose if they wanted to, oh, can I take that with me? If the other partners agree, then fine, okay? And obviously, you won't just let the partner go 
with a ten thousand pound car for example you will say you know we want 10k for that please so how do you deal with that okay so instead of the partner paying the business through cash what you do is you just reduce their capital okay so they the, the partner retiring will take the company car for themselves and obviously because it is an asset the whatever asset it may be you will you know non current assets always have a debit balance and if you are cancelling it you credit the account okay so if they are taking the company car for themselves you credit the asset and you debit the capital and that's how you charge them obviously the capital if it is positive it is a credit and if it's negative it's a debit so what we are doing here is we are charging them and we are saying to them look take the car we're going to reduce your capital account okay so when you end up taking the rest of the money we've already charged you for that so you don't need to give us you know a separate check or something like that another pay payment arrangement you don't need to worry about that okay so simply cash coming in cash going out equipment coming in has to be accounted for and equipment going out has to be accounted for. and you'll know here you can see capital is being used okay so cash coming in equipment coming in cash going out or equipment going out capital account must be used and uh, the transactions must be, must go into into the capital account okay so that's one aspect of the miscellaneous transactions the next aspect is something that we've briefly touched upon I mean we've touched upon current accounts and capital accounts themselves however we've not really talked about what happens when a partner retires what happens to their current account okay so when a partner retires what will happen is their current account balance is transferred to their capital so you want to close the current account off and you want the capital account to stay open and it is from the capital account that they get paid off okay so I've put a, a quick example here I'll just talk you through what's going on so let's just it's what it's what is in bold that we want to focus on but I'm going to talk you through that last okay so we have an individual called a and they have a current account okay and they have a balance brought down and they have a positive balance they have interest on capital they've had a salary they've taken some money out and they've been penalized as well for taking too much perhaps okay so what happens is you balance off the account obviously that's what you would do last okay so ignore that imagine that's not there so you have 26 plus 3 29 take it across that adds up to 22 27 differences there okay that obviously would normally be your carry down however this person is leaving so if a partner is leaving you just balance the account off as normal and you put the figure where it needs to go i.e the equivalent of the carry down okay what does this mean this means think about it yourself on the positive side he had 27 on the negative side they had 29 which means they've taken more money out than what they had which is not a good thing okay they've basically gone into overdraft should I say okay in any case all you've got to do is balance the account off put the figure where it needs to go debit sorry credit here but this is going to debit their capital account okay so this particular scenario that I've put together I've deliberately done it to show you a negative current account balance okay um, obviously at the end of the period it's on this side but at the start of the period it would be here right okay if that was carried down then brought down would be here think about it is that positive or negative this one here this 20,000 that's positive because it's BD on the credit side which means positive if that's carried down where would the brought down be over here which means it's negative okay so how do we deal with that well you just credit this current account and you debit the capital 
Okay, so now this individual has got 45. This is the permanent sort of cash. This is the temporary, ongoing, changing figures. Okay, so this individual has got 45,000 in their account. However, they owe the business 2,000 because they've taken more money than what they should have had, than they than what they had. So 45 positive. Let's take the £2,000 away from them because they owe the business and the rest they are going to be paid through the bank. Okay, so this is a simple question um, focusing on transferring a current account balance to the capital account. I've just noticed that actually should say the current. Okay, so that's come from their current account. That's going to capital, that's come from the uh, current account okay and likewise if it was a positive this would be here so you have a debit and a credit debit positive credit positive okay and obviously if they were taking 45 they would take the extra two so they would take 47 okay from from the bank There'll be practice of this uh, in past papers anyway. Okay, so that is the second slide which focuses on closing off, closing off current accounts and transferring those figures to capital. Okay, ready for uh, retirement and closure. The next miscellaneous part focuses on when a partner who is retiring wants to help his ex-colleagues out and wants to help them by leaving alone okay so the partner retiring wants to help the business out with cash and decides to leave alone for the business okay obviously with a partner leaving a business the other partners might struggle because they might not have enough capital or enough cash so it is quite common for a partner to support a business for a short period of time or a long period of time okay and as long as this gets accounted for there are no issues so how do we deal with this it's pretty straightforward okay it's nothing complicated so two scenarios I'll talk you through each one so this scenario on the left is when the partner who's leaving leaves some of their money as a loan okay so this individual's got £45,000 in the capital account and he wants to leave. Okay, he's spoken to the other partners and the other partners have said, could you leave us with £10,000 if that's okay? Sorry, £35,000. Could you leave us with £35,000? So he says, okay, I've got £45,000. I'll leave you with £35,000 and I will take £10,000 for myself. Okay, now you. this is table entry if this is a debit what's happening where's the credit entry the credit entry is in the bank okay so the the bank is credited i.e the money leaves the bank ten thousand ten thousand pounds goes into his pocket if the thirty five thousand is being debited in capital the credit is a loan now ask yourself a question a loan account is it a debit or is it a credit it is a credit balance so what's happening here is you this individual's got 45 debit capital credit the bank ie he's being paid off with some of his money and as for the loan you debit the capital account and you credit the loan account so you create a loan account in the financial position okay probably as a non-current liability a long-term liability and you will just have partners loan thirty five thousand pounds in there okay it's the same if you went to the bank for a loan you'd have a loan account with a credit balance and if you have a loan from a partner you have a partner's loan account with again a credit balance so there's no difference here okay it doesn't it does seem a bit strange what's going on here but it's just double entry basically 45 10,000 he gets paid in cash 35 is a loan this scenario is pretty much the same 
the only difference is in this scenario he this individual leaves all the money he's been quite generous he's leaving all the money as a loan so the whole 45,000 is you debit the capital account because you are moving it from here to the loan account somewhere else on the credit side okay this is all this is all that's happening here is the double entry is allowing the money in here that 45 sitting there you can't just leave it there it's not capital anymore it's a loan okay you can't just leave the money there even though the money is actually staying in the business on on the account on the account on the books it's got to move it's not capital anymore it is a loan so how do you get rid of that well you debit the account and you credit the loan so you're moving it from capital to loan same here you're moving it from the capital to the loan okay so that is another miscellaneous transaction uh, again commonly seen in past paper questions for aqa okay the next one is we've talked about goodwill okay i'm not going to recap this in detail i'll leave you to have a read of that yourself but we've talked about goodwill uh, and the basis for goodwill and we've talked about how we create goodwill on the old ratio and how we eliminate on the new and we debit goodwill and we credit goodwill okay and these are some of the reasons why we may have a uh, goodwill okay and, and that is referred to as positive goodwill okay what you also have is something called negative goodwill okay and this is where the business is worth lower in value compared to the books so the books will say one thing but the business is actually worth a lot less okay it could be that sales are falling significantly it could be that competition's really fierce it could be that there's some other foreseeable foreseeable circumstances in the market that is causing the value of the business to significantly fall okay and that is basically negative goodwill okay um, and again if you jog your memory from positive goodwill what we've talked about in a previous video where i mentioned where i mentioned um let me jog my own memory now um when a what happens to a partner that's retiring okay if you have positive goodwill what happens when a partner retires the existing partners will pay the one who is leaving okay the one who is leaving is saying bye bye can i have can i have some money for my fair share of goodwill the existing partners pay the one who is leaving okay that is positive goodwill however negative goodwill is when the partner who is leaving okay the business has suffered significantly so the partner who leaves can't just walk away with their money what has to happen is their capital they have to bear some of that loss okay so what happens to their capital is their capital is reduced because they have to pay for the consequence of the business failing okay so when a partner leaves positive goodwill is when they are paid off and negative goodwill is when the partner the partner's capital the one who's leaving their capital is reduced so they have to pay their share they have to pay for the cost of negative goodwill okay and the existing partners they will pay for their share of the consequence when they sell the business okay and we talked about this we said partner leaves existing partners pay them off positive goodwill the existing partners they will benefit from positive goodwill if they were to sell the business and likewise if there's negative goodwill the one who's leaving has to pay their cost capital reduction and the existing partners well what happens to them are they going to get away with it no they will not they will pay for their loss and their cost 
and the consequence when they sell the business. Okay. So I hope um, the negative goodwill is, is clear in terms of understanding there. As for the double entry, because negative goodwill is opposite to positive, the double entry is, is, is opposite also. So previously for positive goodwill, you would debit on the old ratio, credit on the new, you swap. So you debit based on the new ratio and you credit on the old. I would obviously, I, I always do the old first then the new so i would do the old and then the new likewise you know for this you'd use the capital accounts and for this you also use the capital accounts okay something like this has been i've seen it once and aqa knowing how awkward they can be they always tend to put something in that students are not prepared for okay so please do bear this in mind when having a look at past paper questions uh, i've got a couple of more slides left to go uh, very very quick summary so obviously you know the rules if there's no agreement no salary or commission can be paid to partners they can't be paid interest on capital they cannot be paid they cannot be penalized in terms of interest on drawings they can withdraw i.e drawings whatever they want to Okay, remember the one exception to the rule, which is a 5% interest rate. If a partner provides a loan to the business, we've talked about this earlier, we talked about this over here. Okay, if the partner decides to leave, I mean, this is just when they're leaving. Okay, whether it doesn't matter whether they're leaving or not. In any situation, if a partner provides a loan to the business and there is no agreement, partner's loan, no agreement standard rate that partner is entitled to five percent five percent of interest on their loan okay so you need to remember this rule okay if they give you a question and say abc partners were partner a b and c were trading they had no agreement but partner a gave a loan to the company you've got to know the five percent rule okay they're not going to tell you that. The 5% interest is a normal expense in the income statement. Normal expense in the income statement. For some reason why, students tend to put it in appropriation because they think, oh, it's something quite unique to partnerships. And it is, but it's not to do with appropriation. It is a normal expense within the income statement. And again, remember that the partner's loan, any loan, is treated as a liability okay something else that i just need to add in here also is that the the um interest the interest oops the interest on the interest The interest received, i.e. when a partner gives a loan to the company, they will receive interest. This will have to be allocated. So this needs to go onto their current account. Don't forget that. Okay. If you are a partner who has given a loan to the business and the, in the interest that you receive must go onto your current account. Okay, quite an important point there, and I, I may have missed that off previously. I can't remember, um, but do remember that. Okay, uh, just remember that when it comes to testing partnership accounts, most questions will be split, i.e. appropriation. They'll say, you know, three partners were trading for 12 months. For the first three months, they had no agreement. And then for the rest of the nine months, they had, they formed an agreement. OK, you have to remember these rules. Do do not forget them, especially that one there. OK, know how that is treated. Normal expense. Don't put it into appropriation. And uh, last but not least. Is to do with uh, just a reminder on current accounts and capital accounts that current accounts, they aren't necessary. 
Okay, if a partnership wants to use them, they can use them. If they don't want to use them, they don't need to. Okay, what would you do if they not, if they aren't going to use them? Everything goes into capital. Okay, on the same side. If you would normally debit current account, then you debit capital. If you aren't going to use a current account, okay. So use a current account if you want. If you don't want to use it, it doesn't matter as long as you record the transactions on the right side. That is absolutely fine. Okay. Obviously, if AQA tell you they are using current accounts, then you must use them. Okay. Don't be smart and start creating a capital account and putting everything in there. Don't do that. So if the question says they are using current accounts, use them. If the question says they are not to use them, then put everything in to a capital account. Okay. On the same side as you would for current. So, for example, interest on drawings, that normally goes into the current account, right? And that is normally a debit because it's a penalty. It reduces the value, okay? So, put it into current account. If they aren't using a current account, then put it into the capital on the same side, okay? The next two slides, obviously, you can see slide 8 and slide 9. They will be formed as part of a separate video which is going to be focusing on revaluation, which is the last change to partnerships um, and slightly a bit more, quite quite different actually. So I've, I've decided to do this in a separate video, which hopefully will be up in the next uh, 24 hours or so. So, um, so yeah, the, this video just covers some general miscellaneous parts to partnerships. Um, very important stuff that you need to remember and so hopefully that's been useful and uh, thank you for listening.